question for Monica. Yes, sir. Uh, you're making web components. You're using Polymer. Um, I'm an Angular uh, one. We can now fight Angular after. Two. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Angular 2 developer, both made by Google. Um, what, what's the deal? What do you mean? Well, which one? Are they interchangeable? Are you trying to start a uh, fight in front no, of No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, just <laughs> I'm just confused, you know? Um, um, so web components are not... I don't want to throw any Angular under the bus, but web components are part of the platform. So it's a thing that we're working with the platform. They're like specced out. There are like four different specs that are coming incrementally to the browser. So Polymer is just like a little tool that in the meantime, among other things, is polyfilling things for you so you can work. Uh, and, and afterwards, is just going to make uh, making web components easier in the platform, but we're not like making abstract elements or like abstract web components that don't exist. We're just trying to use the platform as the platform wants to be used. So just like adding things to the DOM and working with the platform. So I think it's very different from Angular in that case because we're more like a library and not a framework. We're not prescribing how you should build your app. We're just like helping you make web components that you should be able to do natively in the platform anyway. It's just not right yet. Okay. Cool, thanks. Sure. Whew. I could have gone for it. <laughs> this event is being live streamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for it. Yeah. Hi, this question is for Monica. Can oh, you no. Me? Do you okay. also work for Angular? Uh, <laughs> no. Do you work for React? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Actually, no. Excuse me. I'm a student of web dev, uh, and I'm, I'm new to web dev, as are I think a couple of other people in this room. Yay. Um, so I was going to just ask you, at what, what level of, of um, experience do you think that somebody should have before you think that it would be reasonable for them to start messing around a little bit with web components they were talking about? Basic. If you can work with divs, you can work with web components. Um, because basically using somebody else's web component, it's as easy as using like an input element or a div or something else. And if you want to build your web component, it's basically, I've written this code, and all I, all I have to do is make a little bit of effort to like encapsulate it and package it and distribute it for other people. So I think like the entry level is very low. I see. Thank you so much. Yay. Questions? You have a question? All right. <laughs> Uh, I guess both a question for both of you. Like, so you talk about like the web being like a place for like doing art and giving people like tools to make and share art. I guess compared to like traditional like forms where you actually go to a gallery or have like a happening, like what's really missing from the web to make it a place where you can really experience people's creations? I would love, and I can't wait until this is a thing where. Um, there's a lot of museums that I can go to, and I like web VR to like bring them to my living room. I want to walk through like museums that I don't really have time to go to, or um, they're really expensive. Um, so I think actually that alone, if web VR, for example, ever becomes accessible, where it's really easy to see VR things with like a cardboard and your phone, um, it's way cheaper than paying forty dollars every time you want to go to the museum. So it's going to be more accessible for a lot of people, I think. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, my name's Nicholas. Um, uh, I'm, I consider myself kind of like an art technologist in a lot of ways. Um, and I went to art school and I went to boot camp and all those things. But um, otherwise, uh, I really feel like um, virtual reality is a little bit overhyped and that um, adoptive reality is something that offers far more promise. Um, but in order to make those things more of a reality, I feel that two things need to be possible. First off, uh, it would be great if people could make their own game pads. As you say, uh, there's the API. Uh, you know, and secondly, I would really like to see an API out there for natural language speech um, that can be processed by the browser. Um, do you, either of you know of any of those, if any of those possibilities might be uh, you know, somehow a vision of somebody's in the future? I know that there are some companies uh, that are specific based on building APIs, uh, but on this case, RESTful APIs. I guess uh, Google Cloud is one of them. Uh, they have a lot of APIs over there, like APIs that you send an image, and then it can identify like how many, what's going on on that image. There's like two people smiling. Uh, there's one car, you know. Um, and th there's th those APIs that are, are being added. But I don't think that that part belongs to the platform itself. 
it's more like people building stuff on top of it. Um, that's how I see it. And I think there's a speech API for natural language processing. Yeah. Um, I have a dream of like combining all of these APIs in like one magical thing. Like there's going to be like a Twitter thing, and you can do sentiment analysis from it, and you can transform it into like the emoji that best represents this tweet. And mm -hmm. Yeah, like what the the platform can do is is like speech synthesis, you know, where you can uh, just tell things and then it transforms to to text, and also uh, the inverse, you know, where you can uh, tell the browser, okay, say this this kinds of things, you know. So the platform can help with that, uh, but like sentiment analysis and natural language analysis, this ne this needs to be done by companies and. There are some companies working on that. Got it. Plus, if you leave it to the browser <coughs> or to like put it in the web platform, it's going to be so hard to update because you need to get like all the browsers on board with like the exact same API, and then changes only happen like once a year. And mm -hmm. yeah, not on the platform. Hi guys, uh, thanks to both of you. Great talks. Uh, question for Zeno: You talked about these web APIs as having certain browser compatibilities. Is it just a matter of using the right browser, or have you also found some device compa compatibility issues where maybe it's compatible with the browser, but the device doesn't open up that API? You have both of those things. Uh, but I guess when you face those kinds of challenges, uh, you can either ask yourself, like, OK, how is this going to affect my application? If I don't have uh, vibration support, what's going to happen? If you're just like validating uh, an input, that's fine, like you can show some visual feedback as well. So I guess there's always like situations where you can uh, figure that out, you know. Uh, there's a lot of polyfills as well. So for each of those APIs, there are people building code to replace that and make it work on the platform and make it work in certain browsers. So until the browser reaches the point where, like, until the platform and everybody, all the companies reach the point where, okay, this is supported, um, it takes some time, but um, from what I learned is that, uh, like, I, I, I remember like really, really well when HTML5 arrived and there's like Canvas, local storage, all those APIs, and I remember showing those APIs and showing the browser support and everybody looking just saying, oh, okay, this is, I'm not, like tomorrow, I'm not, I'm not gonna look into that because it's not, it's not ready yet. And it is ready, you know? Uh, and I think that there's always opportunities, even if it doesn't work on a certain browser, uh, if you adapt this progressive enhancement uh, kind of uh, thinking, I guess, I guess that's good, you know? Make it work for, for the modern browsers, and if it doesn't work on older browsers, uh, it may not affect like the experience. Uh, in the past where, when uh, the web introduced like border radios. Uh, having the border radios on a, on the Chrome was good, but not having on IE, what was the difference? It was just square. So uh, I guess that's kind that kind of thinking. Uh, it's pretty good for for the web and for development in general. Cool. <coughs> um. All the things we've ta been talking about are really visual. Um, where do you guys see, you know, web going in this kind of IoT future? Like, what interfaces, like, what kind of visual interfaces do you guys see down the line? That's a hard question. Um, so I only, again, only know about VR. I'm all, I've only like learned about it like last month, so I'm very excited about it. But there's this thing called like tilt brush where you get to paint in space, and I think that's kind of cool. Cause, and one of my friends is the, the PM for something related to that. But I think that's super cool because you get to like paint these amazing masterpieces and not clean up after yourself, which is super bomb. Um, so I think that's kind of great. I don't know. Yeah, there's I would also like actually like I want computers to become more touchy, and then you can like draw, like do more things with a computer, and like be more tactile with a computer, which I think would be great. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, 
Hey, um, I actually hadn't heard of uh, web components before this. And yes! It's pretty cool. Um, I Don't noticed a lot of similarities to like React.js, and I was wondering if you knew if there was some like inspiration from that, or if you know we should choose web components instead of React now, or what's the deal with the um, similarities? <laughs> web components are actually, I hate all these framework questions, you guys. Um, web components are actually kind of old. They started in 2010, so they weren't really inspired by React. Um, I don't know. You can use both in parallel. So the, the idea is that once you make a web component, it's exactly like an input or a video element. You can use it in whatever application you want. It's not like framework dependent, which is another way where like making things with Polymer is fine because most of the time if you make like an Angular element, it's not going to work with, with, with React or something like that. But because Polymer is like framework agnostic and um, it can help you make web, com web components that you can vend to other people, but you can just drop them in the middle of whatever framework you choose to use. Um, so if you're you know, married to React, you can use React and also web components at the same time. They're not in any way mutually exclusive. <laughs> Sorry? Oh. Any other questions? Hey. Yep. Um, question for you, Zeno. Um, is there a possibility on those APIs that we can do peer-to-peer -peer communication my browser to your browser, that kind of thing. I think there's already uh, web sockets. Yeah, web sockets is, is probably the answer. Uh, there are some people like um, there's a project called Electron where you can build uh, desktop applications using web technologies, and there's a really nice one called Web Torrent where they used uh, JavaScript APIs to build this desktop application and connect peer-to-peer. -peer. So uh, I think that's a reality already. It's in, in that's a, there's a lot of uh, uh, space and, and cool things to do on that field. Thanks. All right. Any other questions? All right, with that, um, big round of applause for our speakers. <laughs> <laughs>